Imagine you're in an urban area similar to this, where limited space is available for treatment. How could you increase the treatment capacity of an existing plant? Or how could you design a treatment plant that needs less space? In this module, you will learn about one technology that could contribute toward finding a solution. Following this module, you'll be able to explain conditioning, name types of conditioners, and understand considerations for the design and implementation of conditioners at FICASA treatment plants. Conditioning is the increase in the separation of liquids and solids in fecal sludge by the addition of chemicals before settling and dewatering technologies. These chemicals lead to destabilization of solid particles, called coagulation, and produce larger flocks, called flocculation. Depending on the chemical used, these flocks have better settling thickening, faster dewatering, or result in increased solid concentration. Conditions have been used for decades in the dewatering of different types of wastewater sludge. Polyelectrolytes, also called polymers, Lime, ferric chloride or alum are common conditioners for wastewater sludge. Conditioning can have a large influence on in sludge treatment. By increased settling thickening, conditioners can increase the effluent quality from settling thickening tanks and thereby reduce the solid and organic concentration that require further treatment. By increased dewatering, conditioners can reduce the time of dewatering and thereby increase the treatment capacity of existing treatment plants or decrease the treatment footprint of new plants. The selection of conditioners and the optimal dosage is specific to the sludge type and dewatering technologies, for example a centrifuge versus a drying bed. In comparison to wastewater sludge, hardly any experience is available for conditioning of fecal sludge. To transfer the use of conditioners to fecal sludge, information from manufacturers and laboratory experiments are required. In the laboratory, mixing conditioner with fecal sludge in jar tests as shown here, followed by observing the settling and thickening performance in Imhoff cones, as shown here, by comparing unconditioned fecal sludge to conditioned fecal sludge, and determination of the capillary suction time, as shown here, can be used to assess the performance of a conditioner and dose. The capillary suction time is an indicator for the dewatering rate of sludge. Similar experiments can be conducted on a bench and pilot scale with settling, thickening, dewatering columns, as shown here. Conventional conditioners used for wastewater sludge are expensive and commonly rely on a complex supply chain. In a study in Dakar, Senegal, we assessed the potential of conditioners that could be produced locally, such as Moringa oleifera seeds and Kytosan that could be produced from shrimp waste. The goal was to increase settling and dewatering. Locally available conditioners were composed to commercial products used in wastewater sludge treatment, such as lime and polymers. This graph, for example, shows the results of specific resistance to filtration. Specific resistance to filtration is another metric to measure the dewatering rate. A low resistance to filtration means fast dewatering. From this graph, we can draw two conclusions. Firstly, the dewatering rate of unconditioned fecal sludge is significantly lower than those compared to wastewater and water treatment sludge results from the literature. Secondly, Moringa oleifera and Kytosan were as effective increasing the watering than commercial polymers used in wastewater sludge treatment. In this study, conditioning of septic tank fecal sludge could reduce the suspended solids in the effluent of settling thickening technologies by 80 to 90 percent. The dewatering rate, for example on drying beds, could be improved by 70 to 90 percent. This could reduce the dewatering time of sludge on drying beds by 60 to 95 percent. Next to the treatment performance, we also looked at the feasibility of these conditioners to be produced locally. In Dhaka, insufficient quantities of Moringa oleifera seeds for conditioning of fecal sludge at Dhaka's treatment plants were available. In contrast, it appears that sufficient quantities of shrimp waste could be sourced and available for the production of Kytosan as a conditioner. This study can also be downloaded for no charge from our website. Could fecal sludge conditioning be a solution for your city? Here are some additional important considerations for its implementation. Conditionings are commonly dosed as a function of total solids. This is challenging for fecal sludge and is highly variable. Next to a tank for conditional storage and dosage device, a homogenization tank may therefore be required. Complete mixing of fecal sludge with the conditioner is important for optimal conditioner usage. However, mixing speed should be selected to avoid flock destruction. This should also be considered 
during the selection of pumps. For example, for the transfer of condition fecal sludge from a settling thickening tank to a drying bed. In this module, you received an introduction to conditioning, learned about conventional conditioners, and learned important considerations for the implementation of conditioners in fecal sludge. These include identification of the optimal dosage and availability.